Hello. Hi, Afsal. Can you hear me? Hey, mate. Yes, I can hear you. Can you see me and hear me? I can see you and hear you perfectly, yes. Amazing. How's it going? Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. How about yourself? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, weather's getting nicer, which is always good. Oh, it's not. It's bloody miserable here, so it's not very good at all. Where, where, whereabouts are you? So I, I'm based in South Wales. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So it's, got always, it. it's always raining here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's, how's life in COVID? What, it's, why? Um, yeah, it's, it's really good, to be honest. It's nice to um, have a bit of spare time in the day, because obviously everyone's working from home now. Yeah. So um, it eliminates that sort of commuting time, which is nice. Um, but it's, it's quite difficult to um, switch off when you're yeah. working. Obviously, um, it, it, it's a very fine line between work and life when you're obviously working from home. So yeah. It blends into them. But it's, it's, been, it's been fine, to be honest. We haven't, we haven't slowed down at all, um, which okay. is good. So it's still busy as ever. Good, good. Well, um, before we kick things off, I just want to say thank you for taking the time. Um, no you know, a lot of people that watch this will benefit from the conversation, from hearing your story, your background what you're doing, yeah. your current role, um, and any advice and tips you've got for them. Um, it would be great to just learn a bit more about you, um, what you're currently doing. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so my name is Ashley and um, I uh, work at Deloitte in the advisory corporate finance department, which is another term for the M&A team. Um, so we work on buy side and sell side engagements. Um, for various transactions. Um, so I grew up in Swansea, um, but I work in Cardiff, um, in, in the capital city. Um, I went to Cardiff University as well, so I wanted to stay fairly close to home. Um, I studied accounting and finance, and I started in 2014, and I graduated in 2017. Um, and then I went straight into a role at Deloitte then. Um, my role started uh, as a result of an internship that I got at Deloitte. So it was a six week internship in between my second and third year. So it was great. Um, after the internship, I was offered a position. So it was great going into third year with, you know, a, a, a job in the bag. So we, I could sort of relax then in third year, which was, which was really helpful. Yeah. Um, I initially started, in, I didn't actually start in the M&A team. I started in corporate tax. Okay. Uh, I had an internship in corporate tax. And, but I, I sort of quickly realized that, I was probably best positioned and, and my sort of skills getting personality was more closely aligned to a uh, role in sort of corporate finance and deal making. Mm. So, um, so I then, I, I transferred internally then to the M&A team, which was, which was fairly, fairly um, hassle free and, and, and was really good. Amazing. If we go back a bit, growing up, what was growing up like for you, uh, were your parents, for example, adamant on you pursuing a certain career? Or did you know you wanted to go into the world of, you know, finance, uh, M and A, all of that? Yeah, so it's interesting. So I, I had a great upbringing. Um, so we always had a really busy house. We had a brother and a si I've got a brother and a sister. Mm -hmm. um, my parents and my grandparents as well have, have always been really supportive in in anything I've done. So as long as I'm happy, they're they're happy really. Um, my mum in particular was very. Um, very, very supportive in making sure that I studied hard, got good grades. Um, and I think they were, they were always keen for me to go to university because I was more sort of um, academically inclined and so university sort of suited me better than going for an apprenticeship, for yeah. instance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I've always done um, musical theatre and performing since I was very young. So they, they, my, my grandparents always wanted me to go down that route and go to drama college and stuff. But um, I, was, I was definitely keen for a more... Um, for more, definitely more for finance. Got it. And I'm just on your LinkedIn and I see, so you went to Cardiff, as you mentioned, what made you want to study accounting and finance in particular? Um, so I originally actually wanted to do medicine and, and become a doctor, okay. but I had uh, work experience with a family friend and I quickly realized that it just, it just wasn't for me. Um, I've, I've always had a real interest in the financial markets and mm. transactions and that sort of stuff. And I always read, you know, the classic books, like Barbarians at the Gate, Liars Poker, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and that really sort of sparked my interest in corporate finance because it just sounded so exciting. Mm. Um, and I had quite a few friends who, uh, who, who worked in the industry and we'd, we'd had various conversations about what life was like for them, what, what, you know, what a day looks like for them. And I just, I just liked what I heard. And I just said that, 
you know, I think, I think that's definitely going to suit me. Yeah. Um, I was always quite mathematically inclined. So I definitely wanted to do a mathematical type degree, which is why I wanted to do accounting and finance because it's quite mathematical, but it's also very practical and applicable to a lot of different jobs once, once you leave university. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And when you went to uni, did you kind of like have a game plan? I need to get these internships or this internship in order to get this grad scheme or was it just like go with the flow? To be honest, it was more when I started university, it was more my goal was more to meet as many people as I can, have a great time. Mm. Um, But my circle of friends has always been fairly ambitious and switched on. And I think that's definitely had an influence on me growing up. Because I have friends who are, who are doctors and lawyers and other people who are in finance and they're all very ambitious and but they're not so much chasing money it's more chasing their passion yeah and yeah. that that has definitely pushed me to sort of better myself and strive strive to always be better so then once once I I think I sort of partied hard and, and met loads of people in my first year of university yeah. after that then it was head down make sure I set myself up as best yeah. as possible for once I leave university to to go into a really good job Mm-hmm. You got your tax six week uh, internship in your second year, right? Um, yeah, that's, that's if you correct. Could to, if you could talk to talk about how you managed to secure that, what was the process like? Was it easy? Yeah. What were the challenges? Yeah, so I um, so I found out about Deloitte initially through a careers evening. So they came to university, and I, I met them, and I spoke to a couple of guys, and they seemed, um, you know, they seemed really switched on. They're really really engaging. Had some great conversations. So I thought, yeah this seems like a really good company. So I did research and I, I liked what I saw. Um, Deloitte have an initiative called the One Million Futures, which they aim to change one million futures across the UK. And I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. And I thought as a company, it was quite closely aligned to, to, to who I am as a person. So I really liked yeah. that. So I applied for the internship online then, and it was, fairly, it was a fairly smooth process. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to do a couple of um, psychometric testing online and i had an assessment day then where i went and got interviewed by one of the directors in the team and we had a one-on-one interview and then we had a case study which was fairly tacky and then a presentation to a bunch of other people who worked at Deloitte. got it and then shortly after that i was then offered the internship great great and how did you go about preparing for those assessments and interviews so um so how i prepared so i it's definitely you know, I would definitely recommend researching the company in detail and understanding what the company's doing in the market, what impact it's making in the market and various initiatives that they have going on. Because if you've shown an interest in the company, then that, that shows you in a real favourable light. Yeah. And it also ensures that this is a company that aligns with your values and your principles in life. And it's somewhere you're going to feel comfortable and happy working with in the foreseeable future. Yeah. So I would definitely look at various um, deals that they're doing, various engagements that they're doing, all the noise that they're making in the market. That's really useful. And then I suppose a little bit of technical knowledge can never hurt. I mean, when you go for an initial interview for, um, for a starting position, you're never going to be expected to have a massive foundation of yeah. super technical knowledge. But having that on your side and showing that you have an interest in the subject and you understand it, is always going to paint you in a favourable light. Mm-hmm. And was that in London? Did you did you do the internship in London or? Uh, no, it was in Cardiff. It was in Cardiff. Got it. Got it. Um, and how was that? How was that experience? Six weeks. Obviously, it's kind of like you know you're part of this big organisation. Um, you're meeting lots of people. What was that experience like for you? It was great. The team were fantastic, and the whole program was extremely structured. Yeah. They gave you um, goals of what you should, what they suggest that you achieve by the end of the six weeks. Mm. And you have to, that's what you have to sort of strive through um, strive, strive to achieve whilst, whilst you're there. Yeah. I had a lot of exposure to very senior members of the team as well. So the partners, the directors, yeah. and that was very, very interesting. It was interesting to see how the different work styles, the different management styles, mm. and it gives you a really good understanding of what the company's like and what a potential role will be, will be like. Um, without the sort of commitment of working there full time and having a permanent position. So I would highly recommend anyone to, if, if they're thinking about uh, joining a company, definitely, definitely go for the internship if it's applicable. Yeah. Got it. 
So at the end of the six weeks, um, I guess they kind of sit down and decide whether they want to give you an offer or not. And then they call you up and give you the offer. How did it go from securing the offer in the tax area to graduating and working in M&A? Because like, those are completely different areas. Yeah, yeah, a, lot no, of, cool. a lot of the viewers will probably be wondering, you know what, what if I don't like the position I'm in in my internship, I want to work in a different division or area. How do I go about doing that? What was your process like? Yeah, so so at the end of the internship, I had a partner interview with a partner and I had to give a presentation. And after that, then I was off the role. I then finished my third year of university and started in Deloitte. So in, in the tax department, you go to an academy for, uh, I think it was four weeks, three or four weeks, okay. where you meet with all other graduates across the UK in your department and you learn technical knowledge, soft skills, and it's a really fantastic experience. Yeah. And, I then went back to the office and started to do the, the day-to-day routine and I started my ACA exams. Um, but a couple of months in, I sort of realized that it wasn't really for me and I wanted to sort of explore other avenues. Yeah. Now, Deloitte is such a big organization that there are so many different departments and teams that I knew there, there was an M&A team, there was uh, there's an equity capital markets team, there's a restructuring team. And I knew that sort of M&A was sort of what I wanted to do. Yeah. So. I actually had an offer on the table from a boutique M&A firm in the area. And I, I, I approached the partner and I said, um, you know, I've got this offer. You know, am, I, am I able to move internally? And the process was really, really smooth. Um, I spoke to quite a few people in the M&A team, which I wanted to move into. So mm. I had some conversations with them. They were great guys. Um, they're really passionate about what they do. Um, and then I also had a, had a chat to the partner of the m and team. Mm. Um, and we spoke about, you know, where would I fit in a team? What sort of stuff would do the team do? And I, I, I came out and I was, I was so buzzed. It was, you yeah. know, I, I really sort of inspired something in me. And then after that, then they offered for me to transfer internally. Um, so you have contacts inside the organization. You network internally as well as externally. Yeah. That's really, really beneficial. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a very good point and it's something I tell a lot of students because you know oftentimes there's a lot of interns who aren't happy with the team that they're interning and it's like it's not the end of the world it doesn't mean you know you can't work in a different part of the company like all of these consulting firms investment banks they would rather you know internally provide mobility for you let you move into a different area rather than lose you to a competitor exactly you hit the nail on the head it makes so much more sense if you're good at what if you're good if you're a good analyst it makes so much more sense to to keep you internally and make make you happy because at the end of the day if you're happy then the company's going to be happy and you're going to make do better work exactly exactly um so if we dig a bit dig a little deeper into your current role um if you were to explain it to a five-year-old what would you say you do yeah, so I, I think the way I always describe it to people who are not, who don't work in finance, is that we help um, business owners to buy and sell businesses. Mm. Um, that's a really, really basic way of what we do. Um, I also always give the example of how um, Disney acquired Marvel quite a few years ago. Yes. We help to facilitate those transactions. Yeah. Um, so that's so we work on the buy side and sell side, which means that we work on engagements where the buyer is our client, and we work on engagements where the seller is our client. And those are they're very different engagements. Um, but we, we are te- we're typically the lead advisor on a deal at a given point. Um, and that we're involved from the very start of the deal all the way up until completion. So that involves creating the marketing documents, yep. uh, researching buyers, doing the financial analysis, uh, negotiating on the deal, communicating with the buyers uh, and answering questions. And it's, it's a really exciting line of work. And I, and I, I love what I do. Mm-mm. it's a very very in demand and popular area of work and a lot of graduates um, want to break into M&A whether it be at a consulting firm or an investment bank etc in terms of a day in the life like when not in COVID period but when you were going into the office what was that like what time would you get in when would you leave what would your day consist of in terms of like the type of work that you would do yeah, I, I mean, it completely depends on the stage of the transaction, really, because your your workload goes like this when you're on a deal. Yeah. Um, you have really intense periods, and then you have periods where um, the, the onus is on the 
advice-side advisors or, or on the client to provide information. Um, typically, I'd get into the office around sort of 8 a.m. Yeah. And, but sometimes I'd, I'd arrive a little bit earlier if I wanted to go to the gym or something and drop my stuff off at the office and, and go to the gym before work. Hmm. Um, I then typically leave the office around sort of half five, six o'clock. Oh. So the, the work-life balance at Deloitte is, is, is very good. And there's you know, a lot of... Um, there's a lot of, um, they, they value that a lot. Yeah. And they, um, they want to make sure that you're happy and that you're not stressed out and mindfulness and well being is very, is very, very, um, very, very important, uh, compared to what I've heard from a lot of friends who work at other boutiques and investment banks and so on. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Now you studied accounting and finance and you also, uh, did your, did you do an ACA or ACCA? Uh, yeah, so I've just fin- I've, I'm just exam qualified for my ACA. Got it, got it. So uh, a question I like to ask individuals is how much of your degree do you use in your current role? Now, given you've got an accounting background and you've just done your qualification, I assume it's quite a lot, especially given it's, you know, you're working in mergers and acquisitions and you're always looking into the balance sheets and all of that of companies. Um, and so, yeah, how much of your degree and accounting do you use in your current role? I, I would say quite a lot. Um, the the accounting and finance degree that I did really set me up well for the ACA qualification. Mm. You get a lot of exemptions, firstly, and also it, it just lays a good foundation of technical knowledge for starting yeah. in a role in finance. And mm. um, in M and A in particular, you need to have a really good grasp of the different financial statements because you're looking at numbers all the time. Mm. And so, having a degree in accounting and finance particularly where a degree where you've done, you know, case studies and practical elements of the degree as well as exam based uh, mm. learning. And um, it's, it's very, very useful. And I think having that, because, because with Deloitte, you don't have to have a specific degree type to apply. Um, but having a, a, a finance related degree definitely puts you sort of ahead of the pack in terms of um, learning and um, knowing what, uh, what's what before you, before you arrive. Got it. And the qualification that's taken care of by Deloitte, they cover the cost of all of that, I assume. Yeah, so they, they cover the cost of the exams, college, they give you uh, time off to study when, when you're going to college and time off for self-study. So you're, you're very well supported for the qualification. Amazing. Um, what would you say are your favourite parts of the role and what would be some of the things that can sometimes be improved or, you know, the not so favourite parts? Yeah, so um, favourite part of the role, I would probably say working working on a deal is really exciting. I like that primarily because you, when the deal completes, it's in the news, and it's so great to say, "Oh, you know, I worked on that. That is awesome." Yeah, and it's also your you get direct exposure to CEOs, financial directors, CFOs, business owners. You get you know exposure to the C suite in M and A because it's such a big milestone in a business's history and that is really interesting to have conversation with CEOs, CFOs and and really pick their brains on what they think is the best part of the business and all all that sort of stuff yeah and when you when you are sort of given the responsibility to sell a business by a business owner yeah you've got to think that that business owner has spent years growing and building this business and that is his baby so to hand you over that responsibility is a very big thing for them Mm. and it's and it's, it's really, really great to be able to support them in, that, in this sort of monumental decision that they've taken to sort of sell the business and hand it over to someone else. So yeah. that's, that's really, really good. I guess, I guess you're holding the hands of companies in order to take them to the next part of their journey. Exactly, which is, exactly. Uh, yeah. Which is very important. Now, you've, so you started off as a corporate tax analyst and then you became an M&A associate or senior associate, and now you're an executive. And that's great, so congrats on the growth in your career so far. How, or what would you say has allowed you specifically to kind of get promoted and climb? Um, Because oftentimes a lot of people break in and then they're unsure what they need to do to go to the next level or to do it faster than anyone else, et cetera. What would you say are the things that, or the attributes and characteristics that allow you to stand out and grow? Yeah, so I think, when, when you start an organization, it's really important to have a good grasp of the technical knowledge. And um, 
so, so learning about the various ins and outs of the role and the technical pieces of work that you're going to be doing and having that foundation is really important but I think as you as you climb the ladder that becomes less and less important because you should everyone should know it and there's more emphasis then placed on the softer skills so the teamwork the communication the leadership the ability for you to be able to help develop more junior members of the team is really important mm. and the ability to um to give work out to explain things in a really concise manner is very very important and also i think networking as well should never be understated and because it, it's very powerful your network is your net worth it's particularly in m a yeah. if you have a really good network of people that can propel you forward in your career particularly when you come more senior and it comes to winning work mm. your network is one of the most important things that you can build yeah. and i think people think that you should you know that'll, that'll come later down the line but you need to you need to start the building blocks now because as you scale the company all of your friends are also going to get promoted so mm. having that extensive network sort of um if you put the building blocks in early really really pays its dividends later down the line yeah and network both internally and externally exactly right yeah 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 um in terms of life outside of work what 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 do you like to do to keep you, yourself busy outside of work do you have any hobbies that are non m a related yeah um so since i was very young i've been involved in sort of musical theater and performing so up to work i was doing loads of shows and stuff and that that was really really fun and it was a good way to unwind as well because when you're studying all the time it's, yeah. it's good to have that creative outlet um so that's something that's always been a, a big part of my life and um, i also love um i have a passion for cooking so my partner and I love to make these uh, meals from all around the world and stuff, and it and it's really really great. And you get to eat it as well, which is fantastic. What's What's your favourite dish to cook? Oh goodness me! I don't know. It's always a tough so, one. I I I really enjoy um, sort of Thai dishes, so I love making a pad Thai, and I also love some sort of uh, ramen bowl and also sushi as well. To make sushi is is really nice. really fantastic. So that's that's probably my favourite type of dishes to make. Um, but apart from that, it, it's just the usual. It's going to gym and managing to socialise with friends whenever yeah. I can. Yeah, yeah, I think it's always important to kind of have that work-life balance. Like, yes, work is work, but it's important to have your relationships outside of work. Make sure you're, you know, getting a break from everything you're doing in the office. Because sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, yeah. As much as you might love it, it's always good to have that outlet or that break. Um, if you had to start again, if you had to start from uni, would you do anything differently? Uh, yeah, I think I would. So I think once, once you start university, it is quite an over, overwhelming experience when you start university because you, you're meeting all these different people and you don't know what you want to do, um, which society should you join, etc. And so I think people think that, you know, what, your career seems so far away when you start university but really really it's not there are so many opportunities to gain work experience in your first year of university you can get spring spring intern weeks um we've got like a day in deloitte which you can do mm. there are loads of opportunities to do work experience uh, once you start university and i think that's one thing i would have done is because i spent the first year um you know partying and meeting friends and i yeah it took me until the second year to really get my head down so I would have definitely started earlier, 100%. Um, because then you, you have more opportunities for work experience and yeah. you can gauge what area of finance or accounting or whatever you want to get into and the different companies. Yeah. It's oftentimes a lot of students and graduates, they're so um, attracted to working in London because the headquarters might be in London or wherever it might be what would you say are some of the pros and benefits to not working in london um because oftentimes yeah everyone just wants to be in london but you know there's pros and cons to everything so what would you yeah. say are the benefits of not being in london so if you if you work for a big organization right deloitte, deloitte have got a, an office in london anyway yeah. and i work on london deals and deals outside of my region all the time because of because of remote working now you don't have to be based in one place to be able to communicate with teams all across the UK 
and do deals all across the UK. Mm. And I think having living in Cardiff, I love Cardiff as a city. It's got a great balance of having everything you need, but it's not impersonal. Yeah. Um, and also the cost of living is so much lower True. than in London. Yeah. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend doing your research. Don't just think, you know, London, 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 that's where it's all, because I think more and more now, you know, your private equity firms, your, your boutiques, they're, you're starting to get offices outside of London. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I say to students, look, main thing is just get your foot in the door, right? And then you can, like, as your career is 30, 40 plus years long, there'll be time to consider internal mobility, moving around, etc. But as a student, prioritise just getting your foot in the door, whether that be an internship, spring week, what have you. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Before we wrap up, I've got two more questions. Well, one more question. And that's, if or do you have any blogs or anything that you want to shout out? I like to, obviously, when I interview people, I like to kind of give them the opportunity to shout out anything they're working on. Um, or, you know, if there, if there's, what's the best way for students to reach out to you? Is it LinkedIn? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I don't have any blogs or anything for you to share or websites or anything, but um, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy for them to contact me on LinkedIn. That's probably, probably the best way. Amazing. Um, and I'm conscious of your time. I don't want to take too much of it. Um, but yeah, any other lasting or last bits of advice, tips for students, graduates that you would like to share? I'd say I'd say the, the two things are probably definitely network. Even when you're at university, you can network because if you, you start different societies like a finance society, investing society. When you all leave university, we're all going to be going to different companies and stuff. So having that foundation of network before you even start a job is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is to just just you know follow what you're passionate about as well. Um, because if you're passionate about what you do then the work that you do is going to be so much easier for you to do because you're going to work long hours at some point and having a passion behind what you do just makes that so much easier. And a lot of people will say, it's, but it's tricky to find that passion. How do I go about doing that? And I think the answer to that is just try lots of different things, do your research. Exactly. It's right? all about exposure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's really good advice. Um, it's been a really, really useful conversation um so yeah thank, thank you for that and if there's anything like if you ever want to reach out to me if you're ever in london go for a coffee or what have you um but yeah thanks a lot man that's good no problem cheers thank you take care bye, bye.